Good evening, I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. And seated at our table tonight, singer and pianist Giselle Bonfair here to perform for us and performing Sunday at Le Union Francaise. Very good to see you. Hello, Thank you. welcome to our show. Poppy Tucker, host of the WWNO radio program, Louisiana Eats. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hey, Peg. Hi. And it's so great to see Fred Caston, producer and host of Jazz New Orleans on WWNO Friday nights, but he's here to talk about his French Quarter Festival gig because it's a whole weekend of musicians interviews. Welcome, Fred. Hey, Amen. Thanks. Good to see you. Good to be here. And of course, theater critic Alan Smason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. Good to see you, sir. Glad to be here. And we'll start off with Puppy. With big news. Now, we talked about the big Napoleon House news that Ralph bought the Napoleon House. And on Monday night, I was the MC at the American Chefs Federation annual gala and I saw Chef Chris Montero there and he said it's not coming out till tomorrow but I've got some really exciting news I'm going to be the chef at the Napoleon <gasps> house wow. and so I said well Chris will the muffalata still be hot and he said oh <laughs> yes and I said and will the pimps cup still be cold and he said certainly they will and he is oh, so happy he's a and so too. excited to get to go focus all of his efforts at the Napoleon House. And so this is just another sign that Ralph is going to protect and preserve this great New Orleans culinary landmark, just as he's done with the Brennans on Royal Street. So bravo, bravo, Ralph, and congratulations, Chris. And now it's on to the French Quarter Fest because Probably at this very moment, there's 750,000 people down there. <laughs> you see all that? So I'd like to suggest that in the 32nd year of this incredible free music and food fest, you head on down there and first help Antoine celebrate their 175th anniversary at their booth in Jackson Square with Oysters Bon Femme and Baked Alaska. Also in Jackson Square, you can have a hot sausage or a crawfish sausage poor boy with Vance Vaucresson from Vaucresson Sausage Company. And don't you dare miss the Tujac stuffed melaton with mm. Creole sauce. You'll be finding that recipe mm. in the Tujac's cookbook coming up this fall <laughs> from your truly. Have we talked about that yet? I don't think so. I hope you're not tired of that topic Never, yet, because get ready, Peg. <laughs> Then go ahead and cool down with the Plum Street Snowball before you head over to the Mint, where you'll find two first-time new vendors, the Galley, okay? Now, they are at Jazz Fest every year. Oh. Well, now they're at the Mint with their shrimp and their catfish poor boys. And Squeal Barbecue, really great barbecue from Oak Street, is serving pulled pork or chicken over roasted corn and grits and pulled pork or pulled chicken sandwich. Then, on the riverfront, there's all sorts of food areas at the Jack's parking lot, the Palm Lawn, the Burger Great Lawn, the Colmeyer Lawn, Canal Street, and then new this year at the Spanish Plaza at the Riverwalk. They've never extended it that far. And that has made room for new vendors, Patois, mm, Aaron Burgos oh, wow. food, I love it, mm -hmm. Causes, and check this out, the Weston Canal Place serving cayenne crawfish tamales and truffle parmesan cracklins. I want some yeah. of those. <laughs> now, we've got some big news from the Southern Food and Beverage Museum. It is the new home of the Louisiana Eats Studios. Oh, congrats. Perfect yeah. match. We're there. We're moving in. Yeah. And this weekend, if you listen to our show, you'll hear us literally moving in to the Southern Food and Beverage Museum. Now, the big their big news is that next Friday night, well, all weekend, in fact, they're celebrating their grand opening gala, Friday through Sunday. Friday night, they're having their gala event at a 6 p.m. patron party, $200 a person. You'll start off with Dale DeGroff, Museum of the American Cocktail founder, also known as King of Cocktails, and he'll be making cocktails. In the meantime, I'll be in the Rouse's Innovation Culinary Center making some crab kala with green garlic mayonnaise and teaching everybody how to do it. Now, the main gala event goes from 7 until 9. It's 125 for members and 145 for non-members, and you're going to have 
have food from Delicious Perlu, Chef Ryan Hughes, and Chef Justin Devillier of La Petite Grocery is going to be following me in the kitchen doing a demo. Then, next weekend, museum admission is free all weekend long. So take the opportunity to go visit the museum. And events going on. 2 o'clock, Tenny Flynn of GW Fins will present Making the Most of Your Fish. At 5 o'clock, that very famous Stephen Raiklin, who's television host, cookbook author, Barbecue University founder, he's going to give a lecture that he's given previously at the Smithsonian Institute called The History of American Barbecue. And on Sunday, April 19th at 2 o'clock, Chef Tara Hanna of Sucre will be giving pastry demonstrations. Could there be a more delicious weekend? And you'll find me there with my microphone. So well, come see us. Well, that's so exciting. So just to make sure I understand, you're going to be doing your radio shows on a regular basis out of there now. That that is For the WWNL. new home wow. of Louisiana Eats, but of course we are still, you know, out of WWNO. Yeah. That's where we're broadcast from. But our recording studio is there. Brilliant. Great fun. Brilliant idea. Thank you. Brilliant idea. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And we turn to Giselle. And Giselle, you are a very busy lady, but what I love so much is that you focus on many of your songs en français. Tell us about that. Well, I studied French for five years in, throughout high school and college and grad school, even though I was pursuing and completing degrees in biology and botany. I love the French language, and I sing French love songs from the 1940s and 50s, and I'm active in a French organization here, L'Union Française, or the French Union. And you're going to be performing um, this weekend at the Union Française. We, oui, on <laughs> both this Sunday, oui, April 12th and uh -huh. April 26th, from 2 to 4. Uh -huh. It's at 4522 Britannia. That's a lovely place, and I've actually taken classes, French classes there too, you know. But uh, you've been doing that for a while, and I know that not only do you have your a CD um, of songs in French, but you've also really focused on, as you call it, aquatic ballads. <laughs> yes, uh, aquatic ballads are uh -huh. songs from the same era of the 40s uh -huh. and 50s, but they're songs that I sing that have something to do with water, such as Cry Me a River, <laughs> Up a Lazy River, La Mer, La Mer. Uh -huh. How Deep is the Ocean, <laughs> and of course, Backwater Blues by Bessie Smith. And I perform music about the Mississippi River and have a CD of 21 piano solos about the Mississippi. <laughs> and so really my, my water interests run deep. <laughs> I, well, ooh. Mm -hmm. well, so both okay. CDs, though, are, are available on your website. Yes, huh? yes they are. Mm -hmm. And I'm thrilled that you're going to be performing uh, for us. So we'll let Giselle get up, move over to the other side of the studio. And now, though, here's Giselle Bonfair. This playful song from 1947 was recorded by the Andrews Sisters. It's On the Avenue. And the French lyrics are entitled Tout en sifflotant, from the verb siffler. And you'll shortly know what that verb means. If you 
and also on the 26th. Um, go out and hear and free. What a great opportunity to go listen to some beautiful, beautiful music. And now it's time, though, for our weekly Artist Spotlight. Tonight we are featuring two artists. First, a metal sculpture by Keith Fillory titled Number One Red. A Covington native, Villery cuts used roofing tin into fish and to other animal shapes. And he paints them for hanging inside or out. The second piece of art is called Ferns by past Christian, to Christian rather, painter, and of course that's Milton Williams, and it's from his series Beneath Our Islands. These and other artists' works will be featured at the Art in the Past Art Show. That's this weekend. It takes place Saturday and Sunday uh, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the War Memorial Park in Past Christian. And visit their website to learn more about that as well. And now, though, it is time to talk to Mr. Fred Cast and what a music film. As much as we all enjoy hearing musicians play, you and I like to hear musicians talk. We do. <laughs> and what a lineup this weekend, too. Starting first with, and I can't wait to hear them, the Wright Brothers, W-R-I-T-E. Tell me a little bit about them. These guys are terrific. Uh, they've got their first CD out now, and uh, they are four of New Orleans' best singer-songwriters. They are Alex McMurray, Jim McCormick, Paul Sanchez, and Spencer Boren. And Jim McCormick had uh, an opportunity to record a solo record, but he was talking with a guy who was going to produce it, and he said, you know, I'd really like to get other New Orleans songwriters involved in a project. And the fellow got on the phone, was able to get uh, Alex, Paul, and Spencer uh, aboard, and the Wright brothers And we're going to hear, born. I think, a few seconds from that, that brand new CD. Yeah, they, they, they've got this new CD. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's very nicely done. <laughs> Looking through a notebook for a memory I'd forgotten In the pages I've been saving for a rainy day The ink is kind of faded, the corners torn and tattered And I can barely read the words I used to have to say I love it. And that's Saturday? You're going to be talking to all of them? The uh, CD is First Flight uh -huh. and they're up first uh, <laughs> on our schedule. We have. Uh, kind of the flip side, you know, the French Quarter Festival, 1,400 musicians, 23 stages. You can get a shot on top of your snowball if you want one, you know. <laughs> it's this big, raucous, <laughs> rambling, fun, celebratory event. We're sort of the quiet side of that. Yeah. Third floor uh, auditorium, beautiful space of the old U.S. Mint. And we as have, we talk about the weekend, yeah. we're going to show a montage of some of the amazing folks who were involved. And there are also some tributes, too, aren't uh, there? There are. Uh, we have two things I highly recommend. Real bathrooms and air conditioning. <laughs> and comfortable chairs. And comfortable, comfortable chairs. chairs yeah. And it's an intimate, intimate space where you hear uh -huh. these really interesting stories. Uh, we're uh, going to salute a number of uh, folks who have passed away uh, here in recent times in New Orleans, greats in the music world. Mm -hmm. Among them, Cosmo Matassa, mm -hmm. who recorded as many great hits and as much great rhythm and blues music as anybody in the world ever did in the mm -hmm. 50s and 60s in New Orleans. But what an illustrious uh, grouping for, to, to talk about Cosmo, huh? Well, John Broven is an English author who's written two of the best books on Louisiana and New Orleans music, South to Louisiana, which is about Cajun and Zydeco, and Rhythm and Blues in New Orleans, which documents the 40s, late 40s, 50s, and 60s era of rhythm and blues. He'll moderate the panel to include the great Alan Toussaint, who's in the Songwriters and uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm. Uh, you know, was there from day one uh, with a lot of these uh, 
productions that Cosmo Matassa did, a mm -hmm. part of the uh, work as a producer, as a pianist, as an arranger. Mm -hmm. uh, Deacon John, who was a great session man in those days, a great guitarist, a singer, and a wonderful entertainer who has uh, had a wonderful career in New Orleans. And uh, Jerry Still Hall, does. <laughs> who uh, yeah, has, has, is having uh, a wonderful career. And Jerry Hall, who was a singer with uh, Huey Smith and the Clowns, and uh, who also sang with the Ray Letts at a certain point. Uh, she was uh, around in those days, and she'll be a part of that panel. Health permitting, she's had a, a bit of a cold this week. We hope she'll mm -hmm. be feeling up to being there with us. That'll get uh, going at 12.30 on Sunday. Wow, now as you said, you have some tributes. You've got a tribute to Al Boletto, to Lionel Faribas, I mean, yeah, Bo yeah. Dallas. Bo I mean, Dallas, really right. is, is quite nice. That yeah. had to be a lot of work, arranging all those panels. And most of the time, you're inter doing the interviewing, right? For almost all of them, huh? I do a lot of the interviewing. Uh -huh. We also have Keith Sparrow from the uh, oh, NOAA.com and yeah. uh, Times-Picayune. He'll be uh, doing one of the interviews. John Broven will uh, moderate that panel on Cosmo Matassa. And uh, John Swenson, who is a great music writer and writes often for Offbeat, mm -hmm. uh, will be doing the Bo Dallas tribute with uh, Rita Dallas, Bo's wife, Wonderful. and his son, Bo Jr. And of course, um, you can go to the website and there's an entire schedule of all of your panels and stuff. A, a too. full schedule, there's you know a wide range of things and great stories always come out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are some of your favorite stories of some of the musicians you've interviewed well, over the years? I was, uh, Thinking this morning about uh, how funny it was, and how interesting when Mashia Lake, the wonderful singer, was talking about she literally ran off and joined the circus to get to New Orleans. <laughs> and when she arrived in New Orleans, uh -huh. her job in the circus was eating light bulbs. Oh my goodness. Eating light bulbs? It's, okay. <laughs> it's a task that has been done in pool halls and circuses. A light snack. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, Thankfully, uh -huh. she now sings for a living. Yes. <laughs> and yes. she does it so well. Uh, and that was, uh, uh -huh. that was interesting. Uh, a really great story came from uh, Greg Stafford, who, uh, when he was about 13, was pleading to the point of tears with his mother to let him join the high school band. She was hesitant because she was afraid something would happen to the instrument and she would have to pay for it and the budget was really tight. Mm -hmm. But after a, a night of sleeplessness for both of them, she comes real early into his room the next morning and says, son, you know, if it means that much to you, go ahead and do it. She let him realize his dreams. Within a couple of years, he was one of the great trumpeters and vocalists and in, to in be, jazz huh? and travels the world <laughs> oh, spreading wonderful. the gospel of New Orleans jazz. You need to collect all those great stories for something, too. These things are actually archived on the musicatthemint.org oh, okay. website. Oh, uh, And you can watch them there. Uh, uh, they stream live as they happen, and they're archived there for about right, 30 right. days Thank afterward. you so much. And once again, fqfi.org for uh, a detailed schedule for this weekend as well. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> and New Orleans Magazine. Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Andrew Weibold gave us the names of the two Easter candies locally produced by Elmer's. One has a roasted almond inside, while the other has pecan fragments mixed with chocolate, of course, heavenly hash, and gold brick. Now, tonight's question in honor of the French Quarter Festival. There are several alleys in the quarter. Name at least three of them. Email your answers to steppingout at wys.org. Our prize is a gift certificate for two courtesy of Vianne's Tea House, and that, of course, is an old Mandeville offering their culinary and gourmet tea experience. Also tonight, we have a T-shirt is worn by WYS staffer Steve Golombieski with the message, Food Festival Daily, Only New Orleans. My, and with a great, great list. And thanks to our friends at wearablevegetables.com. And we've got the New Orleans premiere of the movie, The Last Five Years. And of course, that is through next Thursday. We have two pairs of passes for any showing on its daily run at Chalmette Movies on West Judge Perez Drive. Showtimes at 2 and 7 p.m. And visit the website to learn more. And you can visit WYS.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events, including the Friends of St. Alphonsus's annual art auction and gala. That's tomorrow night. So excited about that. And then this month's installment of the historic New Orleans Collections Concerts in the Courtyard series that's next Friday, it was Friday with clarinetist Evan Christopher. And you can also link to our WYS YouTube channel to view our program on our website homepage. And now, though, time for Mr. Allen. Well, following the success of Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice's rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, people became interested in finding out what else they had done. And one of the earlier projects they had worked on, not the very first, 
first, but their second project was the tale that dominated the Genesis story, if you will, the book of Genesis I'm talking about, the story of Joseph and that coat of many colors. We're going to take a look right now uh, at, at a couple of uh, shots of the production that's going to be coming to the Sanger Theater showing up uh, this next week. Uh, you'll see Joseph in the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. The Sanger Theater opens its doors to welcome New Orleans' uh, uh, you know, uh, way of, of saying hello to the story. We've seen it before. This musical opened on Broadway back in 1981 in December and made a star out of Lori Beachman, among other things, some of the beloved songs that you'll see and, and listen to, Any Dream Will Do, Go, Go, Joseph, and that Elvis-inspired Pharaoh song, The Song of the King. Joseph will be running through uh, the 19th of April, and again, uh, it's it, uh, a great spectacle of a show, and, and one that I think that uh, bears seeing once again if you haven't already seen it. Uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Goat, again, at the Sanger Theater. Now, for those of you who are looking for a little bit more of a nostalgic look back, a little bit of a, a, a little run to TV land, if you will, uh, the... TV themes of the 60s, the 70s, the 80s are all brought back, 30 of them at least, by Frederick Mead. Here's Frederick Mead right now <laughs> on uh, uh, our, our screens here showing us Love American Style. That's the name of his show. And that's the uh, Veronica Russell inspired love suit, if you will, so a leisure suit that uh. he did. Um, and of course, yes, she, she was uh, rocking it with him uh, at the Big Easy Awards recently. But Love American Style is, is a really, uh, a little bit more than a fun way to pass 70 minutes of of time, uh, singing along karaoke style. Uh, it's a little bit one-sided in terms of the conversation from Frederick to the audience, but you can join in, and he encourages it indeed. Uh, again, most uh, uh, what you'll find out about is, is very true. A couple of facts that uh, we had to change a little bit uh, when I got to him. I said, you know, we need to talk about that. But uh, he's got everything now, I think, squared away. And again, some of the things uh, that you'll you'll hear uh, will, will bring you back to those nostalgic times of watching on the black and white and the color TVs. So now, you know, I'll mention also something else coming up this uh, week. Uh, it's been on the boards now for the last week. And uh, again, during the time I was away for that diaspora period in Cleveland, uh, during that uh, period when Hurricane Katrina had sort of wreaked havoc on New Orleans, I was able to see some theater in Cleveland. And one of the shows I was able to see was a show called The Lady with All the Answers. It's, it's a, a piece that was written by David Rambo, and it's all about none other than Epi Letterer. Now, that name may not strike a uh, familiar uh, chord in your in your heads, but but her name on paper, in the papers, syndicated was Ann Landers. So everybody knew her as the advice columnist, and, and uh, Epi's uh, sister, of course, was also uh, the uh, the other advice columnist that became so famous. But Rambo wrote this work about uh, Ann Landers, and basically gives you a little bit of insight. Janet Shea is, is taking this one Roman show uh, to JPAS. It's at the Teatro Wigo, and it is a, uh, a very uh, inspiring performance. Uh, I, I'm going to be able to report on it in length next week. Want to let you know that um, it's all about uh, uh, having to agonize over some decisions she's making in life. Uh, the show runs next week, and then it'll move across the lake to Covington. And I uh, want to remind you also what may be one of the uh, last shows directed by uh, Michael Howard at, at uh, Tulane University in his music department chairmanship. Uh, uh, he's going to be directing the Stephen Sondheim and James LaPone work Into the Woods, and uh, that'll be hitting the boards at Dixon Hall. And sadly, I, I wanted to mention, um, we, we, we have to acknowledge the passing of a, a very great friend, a broadcaster, a supporter of local theater, Charles Bosworth III. Mm. He was an actor, a cabaret star. He was the president for many years of the Anthony Bean Community theater and acting school and it was a great friend a supporter of boy scouting very interested in preservation in the area which he himself designated as holly grove dixon and we'll all miss him charlie bosworth again was 73 oh. and um you know hopefully uh, a lot of a lot of people will keep him in their hearts uh, in that area he will be missed and now it's time for our picks giselle your website once again it's giselleballfair.com and l'union francaise is a cultural organization established in 1872 in new orleans wow. okay thank you poppy maggie richardson's new book hungry for louisiana an omnivore's journey she'll be signing it tomorrow at the downtown crescent city farmers market it's a great book and fred your, your radio show every week yes in the time honored new orleans tradition of shameless self-promotion that's okay jazz new orleans <laughs> eight o'clock every friday night two hours of the best jazz from the last 70 years the 
WWNO 89.9. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Alan. I want to remind everybody about the world famous Emerson String Quartet. They're coming to Dixon Hall as part of the Friends of Music series uh, this next Wednesday, April the 15th at 8 o'clock. And while tickets last, don't forget the hilarious hijinks of Varley Jean Merman, Brian Johnson, Ricky Graham, Jefferson Turner, and many others. Okay. It's going to be gone with the breaking wind. All right. And now time for my picks. Here is an excerpt from the New Orleans Opera production currently on the boards of the Marriage of Figaro. Let's take a look. And the final performance of The Marriage of Figaro will take place Sunday, of course, at uh, 2.30. And we, by the way, you can visit their website for tickets for that. And thanks to photographer Craig Kramer for that footage. We appreciate that, of course. And uh, congratulations to cookbook author and artist Kit Wool, who has created and designed windows that flank the Canal Street entrance of the Ritz-Carlton. So clever. This time, there's actually a timely music festival theme utilizing old musical instruments painted white. Very, very clever. Congratulations, kid. And the 19th annual New Orleans International Music Colloquium continues. That's tomorrow at the Cabildo. Jackson Square, visit NOIMC.org to see the full lineup of panel discussions. And New Orleans musician and photographer John Taylor will present his book, Wings Over New Orleans, Unseen Photos of Paul and Linda McCartney, 1975 at the Hubble Library. That's at Author Night next Tuesday evening at Algiers Point. And now, though, we leave you with Giselle Bonfair singing some more. And this time, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? En Francais, by the way. Thank you all for watching. Good night. And now, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? Okay.